Uh, they had to be touching with the uh, um, Right, so today is the fifth class. Uh, yes, we will see. We will. Oh, yeah, right. Last time we started with the F, the F scattering. Uh, we started with the old problems with uh, feasibility. Um, sensitive. Yes, they are going to change the materials. And today we will uh, enter a bit into more the design problem. So, uh, again, uh, we are again with this condition. And we are considering what, what, what is the, the space of physical computation time. So, in this case, uh, we assume to have the all peers and elements are known. And we wonder about what, are the, uh, what is the space of physical computation. So the condition is always the same. We have that uh, uh, it, um, the, the task set is scalar if and only if the parameterization is the one and the command of function condition is true with, uh, with t into a set of the entrants uh, less than or equal to the star. Some the star, if we are changing the, the computation times, then we cannot assume. Uh, we cannot uh, exploit the upper bound in the DBF to compute a short of this star, so we have to play with this star, uh, with the bigger this star, with this star raised to the upper period. And uh, so for given TI and DI, then uh, what we can observe is that the space of VDF schedule computation time is convex. Why is convex? It's convex because it is the intersection of half, uh, half spaces. So one condition of this for one value of t is a linear inequality. Because if you assume that t are given, so basically uh, small t lives in a set which depends on periods and deadline. So this is known. This is then known. Then you have, uh, so these are known. No, these are, this is just coefficients which are all known. Okay? And this is a linear inequality. So the variables in this case are the computational time. So for one value of t, this is a linear inequality. So it's, it's a convex, it's a half space. And if you are doing for all t, basically you're, you're making the intersection of many half spaces. Since one half space is convex, intersection convex is convex. So this, I mean, just from this condition, we can already uh, say that the space of uh, feasible uh, computation time on the EDF is convex, which is already something that we are used for, uh, for optimization. This is just an example. Uh, so um, if you assume that the periods are four, then the five, periods the T2, six, and then the T2, five, then the space of, of uh, uh, dead, the absolute dead that needs to be checked are these ones, okay? So if you write uh, this in terms of uh, uh, there is a, let me see if there is a mistake here. Right, so I I can equivalently we with no yeah here what I do here, since I want to write the condition of the utilization. Basically I write the uh, UITI, I write CI as UITI. And so ti, I put it in the coefficient, and ui is the variable. Okay? So basically, this is the coefficients that you get from one point, from the point uh, 5, multiplied by ti. So basically, uh, at point 5, you, you get, okay, look, you have deadline 1 is 5, deadline 2 is 5, so at point 5, you get two jobs. One job of the first task and one job of the second task. So here in the DBA, in the coefficient, you would have one and one. But since I'm multiplying by the periods here, and I'm writing the utilization here, so I have just t1, t2. t1 is 4 and t2 is 6. So here 1, 1 translates into 4, 6. This is just to, to express the same condition as before as a function of the utilization. So no big uh, mass, OK? And here we write the point the point which is 5. So at 9, we have, I mean, just reading not all of them, but just to see an example. At 9, we have two jobs of the first task. In fact, 9 is the second entry of the first task. So we have two jobs. So we have two jobs and one job. So since the period is 4, 
then 2 times 4 is 8, so we have 8, 6, and, uh, and 9 is uh, the, the time that you have to check. You do this for all, for all uh, deadlines up to here, okay? Then this condition is just the total utilization less than 1. The coefficient is 1, 1, 1, so this is just the necessary condition for, for, uh, for EDF. And this la very last condition is just the non negativity of the function. So you have uh, minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 1, 0. Okay. And just to say that you, know, you can write the, the space of feasible uh, utilization as an intersection of linear inequalities. Very easy. Yes, here I basically drew. Uh, that example, uh, I think it's is that values, okay, and you have, right, you put in this place of utilization, you have that values, and, and that's it, I mean, basically, that's no big deal, it's just, you know, drawing uh, equations. I mean, maybe it's worth noticing that, uh, uh, right, so the total utilization equal to 1 would be like this constraint, which is almost uh, the exact constraint. So this is almost necessary, almost necessary, sufficient. However, here you have another constraint, which is the second constraint. Okay. And here, I mean, what we observe is that there are many constraints that are somehow useless, okay? but that we don't know how to, to discard. So and this is something that is not so clear. I don't know, look here, maybe. Actually, I think we cut a bit. I, mean, I think this constraint also is doing something useful. I think this constraint is also cutting a bit. Yes, in fact, let's see. So uh, what, what I wanted to say is that from the, the previous drawing, from the drawing, uh, we see that uh, instead of the five constraints that we needed to, uh, well, basically before we had how many? We had uh, seven, uh, well, we had uh, five from the deadlines plus one of the utilization plus two of the non negativity. So five from the deadlines and one of the utilization. So basically, here from the five deadlines, we get only two. I mean, the relevant ones are only two in the second deadlines. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, I'm here also write those values five and seven. Maybe let's, let's go back and go. My guess is that 5 is this one. Yes, this is this, this one, because this goes to 5. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, no, this is object. Anyway, I think that's the, the, the one corresponding to 5. The one corresponding to 5, and the other is the one corresponding to 7. Or maybe the other way, I don't know. So what I'm saying is that it is necessary, sufficient, we don't lose anything. If instead of considering the entire set of deadlines, we consider only the deadlines 5 and 70. Okay? I mean, this method that I try, I did somehow uh, graphically is many uh, nights. Uh, and actually, I implemented it a bit into some code, which allows you to prove the many, many deadlines. And in practice, you see that. You see that uh, the number of deadlines that you really need to consider without losing anything. So with the same equivalent test, is about uh, of the order of the number of tasks. So let's say if you have uh, uh, 10 tasks with ugly periods which would require you to test a huge number of deadlines, in the end, the number of deadlines here is in the order of number of tasks. So if you have 10 tasks, maybe you can have up to 15 main deadlines, okay. which is a big reduction. Of, of, of the, the number of sets. So what I wonder was, is that the average case? Right? The average in case of what? For uh, the number of deadlines. So can, can you say that in the worst case also the order is around? Yeah, the but here it's hard. Okay. I did not prove anything. I mean, okay. here we're talking about just experiments. So I even have difficulties to. Worst case, I mean, what you may mean with worst case is. Uh, can I construct a task set such that all deadlines are always necessary and sufficient? I don't know. Okay. Uh, right. So, what I'm saying is, of course, optimal computation time. So, let's say that you have the problem of designing 
be impact the food or whatever the side problem you have in, in which you can play with the computation types in which the computation types are available. If you use EDF, we have a good uh, result. We have something that is, which is good for optimization uh, because uh, the exact region of uh, EDF uh, schedulable computation time is complex. So we can apply convex optimization, which is known to be uh, very efficient, to solve uh, more efficiently the problem of designing the computation time for a given period of time. Okay? This is something that is already somehow helpful. Okay, now we enter into the, the, big, the typical big mess that we find when we start to play with data, etc. Uh, yes, w why, the pro why is the problem? Because we cannot say, so this was the condition of the DF. Again, that transcend periods are inside the floor and are into the set. So we cannot play as nicely as we did with this condition. We cannot play the same way for that. So we have to find some other way. Okay, first I want to, to um, uh, have uh, some... Uh, qualitative analysis. Let's go into this. Uh, let's go into this very special, very special uh, case, okay? So let's consider this example with uh, uh, two tasks, so n equal to two. Okay, we are wondering about what is the space of feasible deadlines, okay? So we assume that the computation times and periods are given, and we want to see what are the feasible deadlines of the DF. So, okay, so we have two dimensions. So we have D1, D2, in this case, D1, D2. Can you see, or there is some reflection? Can you see somehow here? Okay. okay. Okay, let's see, okay, two tasks, let's say that we have uh, e uh, equal periods, a, a super special, super special uh, case. Periods equal to each other, it means that uh, they are equal to each other, right? So that uh, they are activated here at the same time. So the worst case is when they are both activated at the same time. So we have P1, P2, P2 equal to P1. Okay, and let's also go into the case of, uh, of uh, total utilization less or equal to one, of course, which means because you know, if it's more than, which basically can be translated here as C1 plus C2 less or equal to D1, which is equal to D1. So we have, let's see, here we have to fill C1, and here we have C2. And here it is correct, because some of these periods are the same. Now, the question then is, uh, what are the feasible deadlines? <coughs> feasible deadlines are quite, uh, uh, well, I mean, it's written in the slides, but just try to think about it. So how can the deadline be, be reduced as much as possible? Do you want it to? Okay, let's do let's this. Uh, my guess is that D1, D2, D1, D2, let's say that I move them together for the moment. They certainly can be moved both uh, up to the point C1 plus C2. Because if, we, if you have D1, D2 here, D1, D2 here, it's, it's, it is uh, something you can certainly do. So let's say here at point... Uh, uh, right, so C1 is what? Something like this. And let's do something like this. And then we do C1, C2. Oh, so this point is the point uh, C1, C2, C1, C1 plus C2, C1 plus C2. So the data can be here, okay? And of course, as usual, because of this sustainability notion, bigger data are always fine. So if this point is good, also, here is good. Okay. Anybody try? Ah, yes. 
So this part is good. So this part we said it is uh, C1 plus C2. It has both coordinates, C1 plus C2 and C1 plus C2. Okay? Now, listen, from this point, can I reduce any dead line? Can I reduce any dead line? What? It could be any one of you. One. Can I reduce one dead line? The first one. I can reduce the first one down to C1. And it is feasible, right? It is uh, OK. So I can reduce D1 down to C1. OK, it is something like that. And of course, as usual, when this point is good, also everything here is good. OK? But then I could have done the other way around. I could have kept uh, like. Uh, uh, D1 here, and then I use D2. Because if I do it, I say this way, then I have, uh, you know, this is, I mean, the point is that for EDF, ties are broken arbitrarily, right? So I can play with this arbitrarily, with this, uh, let's say, possible you know, degree of freedom to change the data which I can reduce. So basically, from this point, I can certainly go down to C2. OK? So basically, this point has coordinates C1 plus C2, C2. And these points are coordinates C1 and C1 plus C2. OK? I can write it here. C1 plus C2, C2. And this point has coordinates. C1 and C1 plus C2. OK, and I, then I cannot do what, you know, just now, for the moment, just believe me. Okay. But then this is the space of the exact physical test. So you cannot do anything better than that. Okay. For this super special case, of course, with n equal to 2 or n equal to 3. Uh, in general, in general, and now I can, oh, well, I can. In general, so let's see what did right. Uh, so we can reduce D1 to C1, but then I have to keep D2 equal to the sum. Or I can uh, reduce, I can set D2 equal to C2, but then I need to leave D1 to the sum. OK? And also something important, the convex combination of these two points, so let's say, let's say I know that this point is good, but this point is good, a natural question would be, are the points in here good? The data that's over here good? And I would say no, actually no. Because what does it mean? It means, let's say I've data that's here. If I increase one and reduce the other in this way, are those data feasible? No. Because at least one of the two deadlines has to be C1 plus C2, because oh, that's the same, right? So I mean, these points are not good. Uh, right. In more in general, if we assume that we have all the same periods, and we have to have, of course, uh, feasibility, so total utilization less than one, for any permutation of the indices, then a vertex, I call this like a vertex, has coordinates uh, where you just, I mean, the permutation just decide what order of decreasing the data that you use. So for any given order, you set, uh, let's say, the, the, the first one, the pi 1, is the first of the permutation, you set it equal to C1. And the pi 2, you set it equal to C pi 1 plus C pi 2. And then the of pi 3, uh, C, and this is just, you know, uh, in the mathematical way of, uh, of expressing exactly uh, this condition. So basically, you have for n tasks, so the, the, here you say the data ID of pi 1, the one with the shortest one. Then you set the other one at d pi 2, which is the sum of this plus its computation type, and so on and so forth. Okay. We are just, this is just you know, the formula of this. OK, any question on this?
Okay, now how do we make that reasoning more uh, more general? Well, we need to introduce yet another way to, to, to see uh, exact schedulability. Uh, why do we need that? Because, uh, as I said before, these periods and the entrance are inside of the floor of the DBF condition. We cannot, it's unfit, that condition is unfit, we cannot use it. To, uh, to find the space of reasonable periods and that. Okay. That's Bing, right? Bing, Bing the periods. No, oh. Bing, Bing the periods and that, that is into the set, blah, 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 blah. And the no, I think it's Bing. I mean, since the. Oh, okay, okay. okay. That's Bing the periods. Uh, then we have this theorem, which is somehow crazy, okay, as you know, these kind of strange things. But then I'll, I'll try to prove, prove the equivalence of, of uh, well, I'll do it now. The equivalence between the DBF condition and this condition. So this condition is somehow, um, it requires that, I mean, yeah, this. So for all possible vectors of integers, except the vector with all zeros, this is out of all the integers, okay, the vectors of all the integers except zero. So for all these vectors, we need to throw the, the dust set is scalable if and only if, okay, for all blah blah, we find an index, an index among the IK. IK basically is the set of all integer in K that are non zero. So for example, let's say I take uh, vector equal to one, three, zero, this is one, one value of this, okay? I need to find if it exists i in, in what? So this is zero, so I discard it. So this is in position one, this is position two, this is in position three, in position four, right? This is just the position of the integer into the back. I need to find if it exists i into one, two, four, so I'm, I'm not checking at 3, because at 3 is 0, such that this condition is true. This condition, if you want to uh, look at a sort of, uh, well, basically represent here this integer as, 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 as such a like number of jobs. So you see, this is sort of the demand. Because here you have number of jobs times the computation of time. And this has to be less than, this is, the absolute deadline of the i uh, task, the ki job. So the, the ki, uh, the, the absolute deadline of the ki job of the i task. Okay? Just as a one, well, I'll prove the equivalence formally, so I'm at least, uh, I mean, I didn't try it before, so let's see if I don't make a mistake. If, so instead of clarifying the I mean, it be the chaos. So now, from the DBF, now I'm proving just that uh, from DBF, the DBF implies this. And then the other, you know, you do yourself or you do that. So how it works. So if the DBF is this, for all t greater than zero. Well, it's obvious that the DBF implies this. Is it obvious that the DBF, well, if it's obvious, I'm fine, not proving anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for me, it's obvious. Yeah, no, yeah, it's obvious. Right, no. It's obvious. So if uh, it's not, then, <laughs> then you ask Abby why, right? <laughs> it's not like that. Okay, so why it's obvious, right? <laughs> so for all t greater than zero, we want the, I mean, what do we know? We, because we know that we have this, right? Max between zero and t plus pi minus pi Let's, I hope I didn't make a mistake pi plus and man yes we could always yeah okay this is the DBF for all t the sum number of jobs computation time less than the point Okay, we want to prove that this implies this. Okay, obviously. Okay, so 
what do we what what does it mean? It means that uh, what does it mean proving this? It means that I mean let's see that for all k we have to find an i possibly using this hypothesis. Because we have this. We have this and we have to prove this. How do, so the, 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 in the end we have to find i for a given k. Okay. So the, the enemy give us a k. So we, we take this k, which is a vector of, of k1, k1, k2, kn, OK? And we know that they are not all 0, at least 1 on 0. There is at least 1 on 0 because of this, right? So the k that is given to us, there, I mean, there, there cannot be all zeros. We have to find i. Okay, so first I basically I um, define the dead line D and C. Uh, uh, let me define uh, the dead line D I, or let me define D I. Okay, then we see uh, as uh, uh, right K I minus one D I plus D I. I define this. Okay, we are given this. I can compute this. No surprise. And then I uh, define our nice guy, our uh, I, the candidate I, equal to what? To the argmax. Argmax among the k i different than zeros of the i. Basically, I call what I say I star, I mean, the, the candidate I. Because I mean, our goal, the goal of the proof is, is to find I, right? For all K, we have to find I. Uh, I define uh, the I like the absolute, I mean, interpreting as the absolute end, right? And then I define uh, the I star, the candidate A star, the candidate I that I want, uh, as the argmax, I mean, the divide of, of I among the one with the non zeros, the one where the di, the relative di, is the largest. Okay? Is it clear? I mean, this is just, you know, you just have to believe it. And then we'll see that this i star is a good one. Let's okay, see this right there. Okay? It's clear at least how I do it. I mean, why? We don't know. It's, it's magic. But at least how? I hope it's clear. Is it clear how? Okay. And I can always do, because this set is not empty. This set is not empty because of this hypothesis. Because the ki are at least one is non zero. And since at least one is non zero, this set is not empty. Otherwise, if they are all zero, then this set will be empty. But then, I assume because of this hypothesis, this set is not empty. OK, so while this i star is good, so now we now, by the way, we didn't uh, use yet the DBF condition. I mean, if we have a big, powerful guy, we don't really want to do this, right? OK, OK, uh, right. OK, let's see a second. Now we have to prove this. Uh, how is the proof? Yes. Ah, okay. Okay, so we have to prove this. OK, you have to prove this. Very nice. So what do we do? We do S4. Um, the sum for uh, J, OK, let's, let's see J and I can put the I here. And it's J. Just to, because I is the one that exists, and J is like the running index. 
OK, J that goes from 1 to N of those values, those K and J. I have to read the proof. I better, better to do to do it properly than to do more chaos. The chaos is always I guess to look at before, but then I forgot. Mm -hmm. Ah, vabbè, poi non c'è assente. Io vedo che quando mi dà sede, vediamo. Ah, it looks like it should work. Ok, so the, the, the idea is to exploit the, this property for t equal to di for that di di for the d computed for with this di we know this to be true for all t and then say, okay let's set t uh, equal to di for the i index of that value let's see what happens okay what happened then from the dbf condition we know that the sum for i from 1 to n of the max between 0 and the i plus, now the sum is on j. j because i is, is a special index that we have to Yes, so they equal the di. Okay? That's what we know. Okay, so we, we know this. We know this because we know the DBF condition. And we know that we know it for all t. I mean, unless I made a mistake in replacing uh, di in t, we know it. Okay? Okay, so I want uh, this to become this, because this is what we want to prove. It should be not too difficult. Okay, the, the right hand side is easy, actually super easy, because it's already what we want. Because the right hand side is di. But di is exactly this. It's exactly ki minus 1 ti plus di. So the right hand side is gone. Let's see what happened at the uh, left hand side. What happened? I do Oh, Max, since it is the Max. Oh. Ah, perfect. Okay. Uh, right. So, that's the, uh, I, I give you the idea on I, okay, I don't need the DF anymore. Yeah. Basically, what over time, so I, I, it's, it's not so over time. So. What we did is that, okay, this is time. We took di here, okay? Di is the absolute deadline of some task. So some task here, the i task, has an absolute deadline here. The other tasks are here doing their own stuff. Because of this choice, because of this choice, since uh, then the deadline, the last absolute deadline of uh, of uh, uh, the other tasks is all is always on the left of this line, because the i was the max, right? I was selected as the index that, that produced the maximum and the maximum dj. So the others. The others, the, the other dead is always less or equal than, than the other. So they must go here. So these are all the dead ends of the key. Oh, no, no, no. So these are the dead of the K 
j job of tau j okay so the the k j dead like of the, the uh, or if you want the the dead of the k of the kj job of tau j so this is the dead the absolute dead of the kj job of tau j okay these dead are always less or equal than the i okay because of this construction okay so how much uh, how much demand do this job create into the interval zero di? How much does any job tau j create into the interval zero di? Kj, cj, here we go. So this term is exactly literally equal to, to, the, to that. Okay, if you want to do, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, let me see, let's see if I can do it in a more in a cleaner way. Yes, I can do it in a cleaner way. Uh, right, so, this is certainly larger than the sum for j, yeah, I do it in a clear way. Once in my life, I do something if you want. Max zero of D. Uh, yeah, I want to do this. Yeah. J. J, J plus B J minus yes, plus B J minus. This is like, okay. This is a key step, but then I will I will arrive. I explain, and then the, then you understand, and everybody is happy. Okay. Look what did what I did. Basically. This is always larger than replacing this di with this because this is because of the choice of di. This is always smaller or equal than di. This is the uh, the absolute dead right? the kj the kj absolute dead of the task tau j. Okay. See, because of this choice, I can always go down. I mean. It is below this value, so I, I say I write this inequality, okay, and I can write the place here. But look here, the magic happened because d j goes d minus one and the j goes d j d j go k j is integer. The floor is going the max is zero. Is the max is the max is zero is go k j k j okay and it goes okay. And so we have proof. And this is one, the, 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 the proof in one direction. The proof in the other direction, it's a kind of the same. I mean, if you want to do it as an exercise, I just give you the key observation, and then you can try the math yourself. So the other way around is that uh, now we did a proof. I proved that from the DBF this follows. Now we have to prove that uh, from uh, this the DBF follows. So to prove the DBF follows, we have to prove that for all the, the DBF holds. Okay. Uh, the key thing is I don't remember. I tell you the key. Uh, is Ah, 
Okay, we need this mapping. The key is to build, I mean, for all t, we have to prove, uh, uh, yes, we have to prove the DBF condition. So we build the mapping that from t, uh, we, we build the integers. K1, I mean, the usual, K1, Kn, where you set Kj equal to the max of 0 of t plus tj minus tj is j. Okay? So this is basically, and then from this mapping, we, we see that, you know, one condition map to the other. So if you want to do yourself, you just uh, use this mapping and you Okay, now that you are maybe confident that this condition is true, and then basically this condition is equivalent to the DBF condition, let's see what is the implication of this condition into the space of periods and edges, which I remind you was our initial goal. Okay. Okay, basically, um, this can be seen as a covering problem. We have to find, um, what do we want? We want it for all, let's see how it's a covering problem. Let's draw in two, for two cases this set, the set of all integers of vector except zero. All the integers, right? Basically, what we want uh, is that uh, those in, here, let's, if you write this for i that goes from 1 to n, you have n, uh, in this case 2, n is equal to 2, you have two uh, half planes, okay? Basically, covering problem because you are requiring those two half planes to cover entirely this set. Because if you cover entirely this set of integers, what does it mean? It means that for all integers, you have one, uh, one condition, which is true for that point, okay? Let's say I find uh, the two half planes that are like this, and maybe uh, this, okay? So if the condition is true because for all, Point, there is at least one uh, half plane co while covering that point. So all points are covered. If on the other way around, there is one point, let's say this, such that no half plane covers that point, then the task set is not uh, schedulable. For example, if you have half planes like this, a frame that is covering in this way, you have this point is out, and then you have, I mean, this point, the, the dust set is not scaled. This is uh, why it can be seen as a covering. Yes, because, I mean, here what I did was just to bring the KI on the other side, but here you have just uh, a condition, a linear inequality on the K with these coefficients. is a linear inequality on the K. We have the variables. Uh, all right, and you have, uh, this is just a condition. So if you, for all k, you always have at least one among these n conditions. And uh, yes, that, that is covering, then, then you're, 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 you're satisfied. Okay, what this is here, yes, right. Um, something that uh, I want to highlight here is that uh, if u is equal to 1, this linear inequality uh, will become linearly dependent. If you compute the rank, you will, you will find it out, but just, I mean, maybe there is a, more, a simpler way to show, but this is something that happens, okay? Basically, these lines, I mean, what is happening, maybe I will move the next slide, just to illustrate that better, yes. So I'll start with, yes, let's, let us have this slide. Okay.
Okay. So here I'm just an example where I have T1 equal to D1 equal to 4, and C2 equal to 2, and T2 equal to D2, 8, I mean, those values. If you compute, uh, I mean, those uh, uh, inequality, the inequality which was written here, if, we, if you know everything, yeah, because it's just a physics, if you know everything, this, this, and this, then you can compute it. And then magically you have this condition, okay? Since I have delta equal to periods, I have zero on the right-hand side. You see here, it is uh, minus the i plus the i. So if they are equal to each difference, uh, they are the same, if they are zero. If you are zero, then basically the, is that the linear equality goes to zero. Okay, and then basically you have to cover, to cover, uh, well, and uh, all the integer numbers, uh, well, the natural numbers square, except 0, 0, so we don't care of covering this point. And, uh, right, so we have condition uh, uh, for i equal to 1, which I guess is the, the uppermost, while for i equal to 2, you have the second one. And, uh, uh, well, uh, so you have... So my, minus 2, 3, so it's, it is pointing like this way, so you have this half plane. So this, the half plane from this line and below correspond to the first condition. The half plane from this line and above correspond to the second condition. And so we can see that those values are fine, so the task set is scalable, as I hope is uh, uh, natural to see. It, Eight, two, three, yes, it's quite a uh, quarter set, okay. Because the total utilization is uh, uh, less, strictly less than one, so it's five. Total utilization is, is one half plus less than one half, so it's strictly less than one. Okay, uh, right, so what I wanted to say is that, now we said that we have this value up here and those values up here. When the utilization decrease, increase, uh, what is happening is that the two, these two lines start to become close to each other. When they are exact, utilization is exactly equal to one, these two lines are coincident. I mean, in two dimensions, uh, yes, in two, are certainly linearly dependent, but if the dendents are, are, are the equal to periods, then they are just coincident, right? Maybe this is something I can show uh, explicitly. If total utilization is greater than one, strictly greater than one, what is happening is that the two lines goes like, so this moves up so much, goes this way, and then it means that, you know, even if it's a tiny bit, if the, 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 the slope is different by a tiny bit, then it will be, there will be always, I mean, there will, I mean, the, the gap here will increase, 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 and at some point, there will be some integer far away in the future, which will be outside, okay, and not covered. And in fact, if the totalization is strictly greater than one, the task set is not scalable. It is, it is something we have. Okay? I just wanted to, to, to just to, to be a bit more confident. I just want to write this explicitly for a very simple case, for n equal to 2. And for n equal to 2, we get, uh, for i equal to 1, we get c1 minus t1. Okay, and let's say also the case uh, of, uh, oh, let's keep it there, just n equal to 2, plus c2 k2. And i equal to 2, we have uh, c1 a1 plus uh, C2 minus T2, T2. If the total utilization, if total utilization equal to 1, I want to try to show you that these are linearly dependent. Let's see if I can manage. Okay, so if, uh, uh, so I want to find, uh, right, so let, let me divide, uh, uh, yeah, this by, uh, let's see by T1, for example, and this by T2. I think it's quite natural to do. So you divide this by T1, this by T2, I get uh, uh, U1 minus 1 plus 
this by T1, yes, it's a bit ugly, so I have maybe uh, T2 over T1, T2 over T1. And then here I have T1 over T2, K1, plus U2 minus 1. Okay, let's see. If totalization is equal to 1, then uh, this is equal to uh, minus u1. Minus u1. No, which one you are? You are. Yes, this is equal to minus one. Right. This is equal to minus one. Okay. So I divide. I take u u one away, and I get t one over t two. It is the coefficient of the second one. While the coefficient of the first one are minus one. T2 over T1. And if I multiply, if I multiply this, yes, and these are linearly uh, dependent because if I multiply by minus, uh, uh, yes, if I multiply this by minus T2 over T1, I get the one above. Okay? I mean, you do it yourself. Okay, just to say that if it is actually equal to one, those uh, equations are linearly dependent. Uh, okay, what happens if we change the address? Let's say that we are in this case. We are in this case. So in this case, we have utilization strictly, uh, strictly less than one. Since the address are, are, in, are uh, here on this side, Changing the deadline is just changing the, the, the level, I will say, the level of the of the oscillator. So from this condition, if we decrease the deadline, basically, I mean, decreasing d1 means to take this uh, equation, is the half plate, and move it this way. If we uh, decrease d2, it means to take this half plate. It is up here and go push it up. How much can we decrease it? Well, we can decrease it. So here I'm basically I'm decreasing uh, uh, what I'm doing. I'm decreasing the uh, d1. Yes, here I'm decreasing d1 from this condition above. By decreasing d1, how much can I push it down? As long as I cover this point, because if if I push it. Farther, if I push it farther, then basically, uh, yes, this point is not going to be covered anymore, right? So this point goes here, and then I cannot push it. Otherwise, this point is uncovered, and then the condition is false. So by putting this point into the machinery, we find that the minimum dead drive is D2. Is, uh, the minimum dead drive for D1 is equal to 2. OK? In the other case, Let's say we want to find the, the minimum dead in D2. Basically, we have to push this out plane up. How much can we push this out plane up? We can push it as long as this point is left co is covered. Okay. And if we do this kind of trick. Uh, over and over, what we find for that very special case is this space of visible deadlines. So this corresponds to, uh, yeah, corresponds to let me write here, so I remember. So to the case of, uh, well, I'm changing the data. So the i is no longer equal to 4. Right? So it's t1 equal to 4, and c1 equal to 2. T3 equal to, plus three, whatever, 
C2 equal to 8, C2 equal to 3. Okay? So the space of feasible deadlines for this case are these ones. Okay? So of course, D3 can never be below uh, C3. And of course, D1 can never be below C1. This is obvious, okay? Uh, it was also obvious that, uh, uh, so that the unequal to periods are always good, because here we have totalization less than one. So D1 equal to four, and D2 equal to eight. And up here is feasible, and it is, okay? Even a bit less, so basically we do. I mean, if you do this integer kind of things, we find this box. Okay. This, yeah, of course. So this this point corresponds to to to. I mean, when I say that um, by moving this up here, d two equal to five. So this number five is the one that you find back here. So you see that D2 for these values cannot go here. Otherwise, what happened here? Actually, D2 can even increase, can even decrease even further. But what happened? To, to, to decrease, decrease uh, D2 even further, you need to cover this point by this inequality. So if instead, if you increase D1 up to a point that you can cover this, so like by some amount this way, then D2 can be decreased a bit further. And so this corresponds to this kind of uh, zigzag shape. Change the period. So now it's a bit more, yeah, so far it was quite simple. Uh, yeah, the condition is the uh, DA is less than DA or is uh, for otherwise also? But the colleague here, the inequality. Oh, I'm saying, uh, no, for any, for any data. For any data. Any data, larger. Uh, it's larger than here? Yes, yes, even larger. Here, uh, uh, the periods were uh, 4 and 8, but you know, this is the condition which is true in general. So D1, 4. Actually, it has some advantage sometimes. If you increase the data of, of D1, I mean, the plus tau 1, so if you increase D1, you can gain in D2. It is something that may, uh, it may be useful. Let's say that, that uh, D2 is very sensitive to, to jitter, and you want it to be very uh, precisely scheduled. So you set D2 equal to its minimum value, which is a quiz computation time. You cannot decrease D2 less than C2. But if you set, then you may ask yourself, look, if I have set uh, D2 equal to C2, What's the minimum value, minimum feasible value of D1, which I can, I can tolerate? And it is 5, which is larger than the But in this case, uh, can you go to the uh, main side? Uh, yeah, to the? That uh, equation. Yeah, this equation. Mm -hmm. In this equation, suppose I'm taking only one uh, task. Only one task. Mm. And then C uh, equal to 2, T equal to 2, and D equal to 3. Yeah, okay. You take what? C equal to 2. C, C, C. Uh, computation time. So only one task. Yeah? yeah, only one task. I'm just checking whether it's Okay, okay. check it. only one task. It's easy, okay? Because. Uh, so in this case, it's not. Uh, so for, all, for one task. Yeah. For all, okay, let's maybe, it's maybe one task, it doesn't apply. Yeah, let's okay. So for all, uh, basically, what does it become for, for one task? For one task, is a uh, for all uh, K into, let's say, uh, right, the, the integer without zero, okay? You want that exists uh, one value in the vector, but then now the value in the vector is to be that value, because only one. Only one. So now i is 1, and, and ki is, is k, such that, so now we have uh, i equal to 1, and of course ki is equal to double k, such that to what? The sum, such that C, K, less than or equal than 
k minus 1 e plus d. And of course, yeah. It's, 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 it is what it has to be, right? Yeah. But this condition, like I'm ch checking with one example, it's equal to 2, p equal to 2, and deadline is a higher than the um, this, uh, time period, then it is giving 0 less than equal to minus 1. No. Because. Uh, no, so not this one. This uh, the CI minus TI. Yeah, this oh, let's see. Okay, maybe I don't know. I may have done some mistake. Well, uh, okay, look, for, for, for uh, one task call, you don't have this, right? Yes, there is no. Okay, so... CA minus TA. Let's see. Let's see. If CA let's equal to PA. Yeah, one second. So we have C, we have only one task, right? right? So we have no I anymore. Yeah, yeah, C minus T. C minus T. Times K. We have no I. So it's less or equal than what? Than minus T. Plus D. Plus D. Okay. What when well, you want this to be for all uh, K? For all K. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what value do you want me to write? C equal to 2. 2. P equal to 2. 2. And D? D equal to 3. D equal to 3. Oh. Okay. 0 less or equal to 1. It's fine. I know it's fine. If it is a... Um, Zero. Yes. Three. Okay. If it is a deadline, deadline is three. Or, three, or the time period is three. And deadline is two. Yeah, but then you increase the But wait a second. Okay. So you have the period of three and then of two. Of two. Okay. I think Sunil... Uh, you are on the wrong path. But, you know, I like to follow this. Uh, you know, it's good to, be, to play a bit. Uh, so, and the computation time is what? It's two. This is feasible, right? And it is also time feasible. Why that? Because, yeah. We have a negative. Here we go. Minus k less equal than minus one. For all k, yeah, very, 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 of course. Or okay, integers, right? Yeah, I just follow the scheme. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, it's good that somebody, some people try the condition. Oh, no, it's a good place. Sometimes you see, ah, oh, yeah, it works. Somebody proved that. Who did the first proof? We never know. The first, nobody has ever seen the first proof. Okay, let's move on. Here, 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 periods. Okay, what happened when we change the periods? When we change the periods, it's a bit, uh, well, it's not tricky. I mean, the point is that in this equality, let's see, um, the periods appear. So why the deadline appear in that inequality only on the uh, right hand side? So it was somehow easy to, to determine the effect because it was just a shift of the same inequality. The period appears both here and here. So it's a bit trickier. So basically, it's together with the shift. I mean, it's kind of rotation, if you want. And uh, if you find, if you want to find the the, the the points where it rotates around, where the point in dimensions, let's say in three dimensions, the, the, the line or you know the condition around which it rotates. You just you know the way I do, I write here T i prime and T i second, and then I try to do to see what condition I get for varying t, and just what I find is uh, basically uh, this condition. So we find the k i Equal. So if you, you made the intersection of this for varying ti, okay, ti, and then you find this condition, okay, which basically gives the point around which it rotates. For n equal to 2, it's a bit uh, simpler, because for n equal to 2, basically it rotates around, if you change t1, the half plane rotates around the point 
k1 equal to 1 and k2 equal to this value. And if you change t2, basically, it rotates around the point k1 equal to this expression and k2 equal to 1. I have, a, I have an example here to see it in practice. So if, if with these numbers, you, you plug into the formula I showed you in the previous slides, you see that you know, changing T1 makes the half plane rotate around the point 1 and point 4, which is this one. So when you change the periods, basically the, the half plane rotates around this point. When you change the... Uh, the period T2, the half plane, the second half plane, rotates around this second point, 1.51, okay? And then now one may, may be tempted to, 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 to compute or to draw, if you want, the space of feasible uh, frequency. So let me write it uh, the, 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 the inverse of the periods as I think is spoken a bit simpler. So I have 2 equal to 1 over P2. It has, of course, to be uh, into the EDF region. Okay, so 1, one over 2, 1 over 5. It's gone, completely gone. Maybe I can, let me see if I can uh, reach because I need both. Okay, so this is somehow the EDF region of feasible uh, task frequencies. I mean, this is just one over, one over C1 and one over C2. And this is just the EDF, the necessary utilization as we call the one. Okay, now let's see what happened. Uh, right, for, for values, I mean, starting from this value, I mean, now I want to move along uh, this total utilization boundary because, uh, as, as we know, if we go below, it's always good. Because if, it, if I find a point good here, then everything is good here. So if I can, let's say, go through the entire line, then everything is good. OK, let's start from this point. T1 equal to 27 and T2 equal to 27 over 5, which is a point that gives full utilization, and probably is a point like uh, 1 over 27 and the corresponding point here. Okay? And here you can see, I hope you can see that, you can, since I'm moving along utilization equal to 1, I'm moving in a way that these two lines are always parallel. So when I move these two lines, I keep, I mean, I always cover everything. Actually, the points here, this point is covered twice, so I'm a bit uh, over, uh, I mean, I have some slack, if you want. Uh, then at some point, at this kind of critical condition, I have uh, the two lines aligned together, and this corresponds to the case with uh, T1 equal to 8, which is maybe here, so 1 over 8 is the frequency, and T2 is whatever you get from here. Okay, then from this point, you can actually uh, decrease, decrease T1 a bit more, or increase F1 if you want, because uh, you can leave some white space here where you do not cover, as long as because the integers are not uh, entire, are not covering the entire uh, real plane. So you have some space between integers. And if you do the math, the, I mean, the maximum you can do is, is this. And then from this point, uh, yeah, from this point, then basically you, you will find some holes. OK, so 6. So 1 over 6. But then from this point and on, for example, uh, here is somehow dashed. So you got some points which are not covered. But then this point is also covered. And then if you go on, I mean, there are, 
once in a while you find points that covers, but then uh, there are some points where you, uh, you do not cover. So here is a bit uh, unclear well, what it looks like. Okay. Um, yeah, I just go on and we conclude. And, uh, and it's three slides and we finish. Um, of course, I mean, this kind of, uh, uh, well, this visualization is right. I mean, the condition that I presented before is exact. So, I mean, there is no big uh, uh, further uh, investigation. That's the way it is. So, the, the, however, that, I mean, this way it is may complicate pretty much if you want to do optimization. When I say that you want to assign optimal fields, I mean, how do you uh, run optimization of a religion which is like this? We don't know. It's, it's crazy. So one good way to, do, to, to, to go could be to use uh, uh, sufficient tests, of course. Right? So there was this test, which is you know a, a sufficient condition for ETF. Which, for example, is the advantage of being convex in the space of dev. And so, if you have uh, a function which is convex also with the deadlines, then you can very efficiently solve the optimization for the deadlines onto this region. And to give you an idea of how, how this region looks like, basically, if this was the space of exact feasible deadlines, the region, the convex region that you get from the condition uh, just before is this one, okay? Where basically you cut this corner, which gives, which are the source of this no convexity. And then you make the optimization of it. Optimal design, yes, I'm about to conclude. This problem, the optimal design of period and data, is very typical in control systems. For example, in control systems, you may be given computation time of tasks, which have to run onto a, a, a controller or whatever device which you have to control. And the idea is what is the, the, the best choice of periods, sampling periods, and the, and the address, which in this case, Correspond to the delay from the from the release to the, the completion, such that such that some metric is uh, is uh, minimized, some cost is minimized or performance, okay. and such that it's, it's kind of okay. Um, this problem is very difficult solving jointly given the address. Um, what I want to uh, to, to say is that. Uh, there are some cases where, uh, opt I mean, well, let, let me show you this example. So we suppose you have computation of two tasks, right? Computation time uh, C1 equal to 1 and C2 equal to uh, 1, the gate. And suppose that you run optimal periods, and you find that your optimal periods are uh, something like, uh, typically optimal periods are always fully utilizing the processor. It is quite typical because it doesn't mean, because there is always a gain in in performance by running the controller faster. So it will never end up with uh, uh, periods which are not fully utilizing the processor. So let's say that from those computation times you get these uh, values of periods. Uh, however, from the space of deadlines. Uh, we know, or at least uh, we understood that uh, if you have periods uh, which are a values, such as say, bad values, 2.1 or 1.91, the amount of reduction of dead that you can do is very limited. And the amount of dead, the dead reduction is the amount of separation of, do, of those uh, planes, right? Uh, if the periods are very bad, like, this, like in this case, the amount of reduction that you can do is very little. If instead you take, let's say, periods which are not optimal for periods, but, are, but which has the advantage of being the same, for example, 
T1 equals to T2 equals to both two, so they are both equal to two. In this case, the, the, the amount of the reduction of the index that you can do is much larger. So if, for example, the task set is very sensitive to the delay, maybe it's more convenient to, to assign suboptimal periods if this can lead to a greater uh, cost reduction in terms of delay, because you, know, you can make the data very, very short. Well, in this case, the data you can really not touch. OK, this was the last slide. And uh, yes, and of course, yes, solving this problem would be a decent contribution, because here we are somehow suggesting not to choose the optimal periods, because the optimal periods are these ones. But then we see, look, if we just perturbate the optimal periods by a little bit, instead of 2.1 and 1.1, we take 2. We lose optimality for the period, but we gain a big advantage in terms of data. We can reduce the data by a lot, making possibly the cost smaller if the task set is sensitive to, to, to the delay. OK. This concludes the today's class. Ah, it concludes also for the. Uh, can you please say what the cost is? The cost is the, yeah, the cost. Uh, Wait, for example. Yeah, the, the control cost, uh, the inverted pendulum, uh, yeah. the amount of uh, deviation from the stable position of the inverted pendulum. Okay? Let's say that, uh, of course, you want the inverted pendulum to stay as vertical as possible. If you deviate, and you can somehow, well, no, you, no, not somehow, you can write that as a factor of the period of the, of the, of the controller. You can write that as a factor of the period of the controller. And you can see that you know, with larger periods, the cost is larger. Uh, and uh, if the period is smaller, the cost is smaller. So on, so on. Okay.